Come and listen to my story about a man named Jed. A poor mountaineer barely kept his family fed. And then one day he was shooting at some food. And up through the ground come a bubbling crude. Oil, that is. Black gold. Texas tea. Well, the first thing you know, old Jed's a millionaire. The kinfolk said, Jed, move away from there. Said, California is the place you ought to be. So they loaded up the truck and they moved to Beverly. Hills, that is, swimming pools, movie stars. The Beverly Hillbilly. my size, so I thought, oh, good morning, Chief. <laughs> Chief? No, it wasn't an animal. It was just my boss. He either has heartburn or he's had to spend a lot of money. Listen, I better call you later. Bye. Ah, that goofy wife of mine, that's what I get married for love. Oh, well, I see it isn't heartburn. How much did she spend? $2,500 for a statue. Really? Yeah, something called Ecstasy by Carl Bach. Oh, one of his original metal sculptures. How exciting. Well, you might even win the Beverly Hills Culture Committee Award. That is the only reason Margaret bought it. $2,500. Oh, Chief, it's a great work of art. You'll enjoy it. Why, is it deductible? <laughs> no, of course not. What does it look like? I haven't seen it. I only hope with a name like Ecstasy, it has something to do with money. <laughs> Howdy, what can we do for you? I'm supposed to know this is 518 Crestview Drive. Well, that's his address, but I... You ain't leaving your junk around here. That belongs in the city dump. I'm inclined to agree with you, lady, but it says right here, Mrs. Melbourne Drysdale, 518 Crestview Drive. Well, the number's right, but the Drysdales live yonder. Oh, yeah? Now, hold on. Miss Drysdale don't hold a cluttering up the neighborhood neither. That's right. It puffs her waddle up just having us here. Well, I don't know nothing about waddles. All I know is she paid 2,500 clamps for this, and I'm delivering it. I'm Mrs. Drysdale. I've been waiting for you. Why did you pull in here? Take it easy, lady. There's been a mix-up. Well, drive over to my place at once. I don't want these peasants ruining my masterpiece before you drop it off. Excuse me, Miss Drysdale, but it looks to me like it's already been dropped off a couple of times. And run over by a cement truck. Maybe you better send for one that ain't smashed up. This is the work of Carl Botch. Well, if he's the one that done it, he ought to either fix it or pay for it. I might have expected it. Every time I come over here, I'm presented with another display of your abysmal imbecility. This, my dear Clampitz, is ecstasy. Well, thank you, Miss Drysdale. We enjoy talking to you, too. <laughs> well, just the other day, I said, Granny... Howdy, I... y'all! Boy, will you look at that? Think that's something? Well, I'm glad to see that one of you is properly impressed. I sure am. Anybody hurt in that wreck? Oh! <laughs> I ain't no wreck, boy. Well, then what is it? We don't know. But she sure traded a lot of good eating for it. 2,500 clams. Granny, I think out here that means money. Darn tootin', it does. Clams is going for 79 cents a pound. I hope the weird-looking thing on that truck isn't what I think it is. Afraid so. It's your wife. <laughs> What'd I say? Come on in, Mr. Drysdale, Miss Jane. That truck is delivering Mrs. Drysdale's new art masterpiece. Art masterpiece, hogwash. Hogwash is right. I just paid a fortune for a statue that's nothing but a pile of scrap metal. Now, now, you might find you like it after they get it all put together. <laughs> it's already together. <laughs> You're sure coming apart. Help him in, Jed. <laughs> Ellie. Run, fetch my jug. He's shaking like a 50-cent ladder. Well, I don't see why. I was just saying Mrs. Drysdale might win an award with her new sculpture. Yes, from the junkman of America, prize chump. Really? 
Congratulations. Jethro, I was referring to the Beverly Hills Culture Committee competition to find the finest example of privately owned art. You mean she's going to try to win with that pile of... Uh, that thing on the truck? Maybe they'll give her something for keeping it out of sight. Really? You, you must observe the sculpture in its symbolic terms. It portrays man in a moment of, of rapture and exhilaration, uplifted with joy, transformed by his love of life. You must see it as the artist sees it. <laughs> Miss Jane, there ain't enough in this jug to get me that pickled. Come on. I want to be there when they unload ecstasy. They might drop it. A small chance of that. I know, but we can hope. <laughs> well, I don't see no way to help them, so uh, let's go on out back and get that kindling split. I have half a mind to paint a picture that it'll knock that cultural committee right on its pillow push. Now, Granny, all you ever done is decorate churns and whitewash fences. It's only a step from there to the big time. <laughs> what you gonna paint? Everything. Animals, people, Jethro. <laughs> you reckon you'd get to be world famous? I wouldn't be a bit surprised. Art talent runs in my family. My late third cousin, was a famous, famous painter and poet. Who? Who? Great golly whoppers. I thought the whole world heard of Homer Grimble. Hey, he was an artist, huh? And poet. That man thought up and painted every Burma shave sign in Pike County. <laughs> Run and get some brushes. I'm picking up where he left off. I only wish you was here for inspiration, Cousin Homer. But as long as you ain't... <laughs> Boy, chopping all that wood sure gives a fella appetite. I could eat a boiled mule. Instead of vittles, try to think of a way to help Mr. Dragdale win that art award. Jed, you're gonna be so proud of me. You've been painting the fence, huh? No. Do you remember my third cousin, twice removed, the great artist and poet? You mean Homer the sign painter? <laughs> well, I'm carrying on his work. I was gonna do myself a painting for the contest. And then I said, what would Homer have done? So I'm giving my painting to Miss Drysdale so she can win. Well, that's sweet of you, Granny. Yeah. Hmm. That's all. What are you doing? You always said when you was making up cakes that I could lick the mixing bowl. There was enough batter for two cakes in that bowl. It was awful good, too. Just a waste of time to bake it. <laughs> I want to see your picture. What's it up? General, I've done them from memory. Well, ain't that something? From memory, huh? It weren't hard. I just closed my eyes and painted the big food shoot like I remembered him. <laughs> Ethro, Granny's come up with a way to make Miss Drysdale happy. You mean we's moving? <laughs> we's gonna give the Drysdales something to win that award with. A real art masterpiece. Forget it, Uncle Jed. I seen Granny's painting. Who ever heard of a railroad tunnel with teeth in it? I'm not talking about that. Come on. Mm. I got to finish this first. Why? Mm. Goes with the cakes I ate. It's the icing. <laughs> hey, Alan Allen Art Gallery. Hey, Alan Allen speaking. Oh, yes, my dear neighbor, Mrs. Fisk. I wanted to thank you for that seafood casserole you gave me. It was yummy. <laughs> now, why would my pussycat want to get in your azaleas? <laughs> oh, very well. I'll, I'll have my gardener attend to them. I'm hiring one. I called the employment agency this morning. And, uh, yes, I know, but, but look, if you'd stop being so nasty, I, I think a gardener and his helper just came in. Jethro, <laughs> you sure this is the best art masterpiece store? Yes, sir, Uncle Jed. The telephone information operator said this here A. Allen Allen is the number one in the listings. Good. We'll ask him, can we look at his stuff? Howdy. I'm Jed Clampett, and this here is Jethro. 
What are you doing? We'd like to ask a big favor. Now, you could put in a fish's eye what either of us knows about art, but we'd just like to be showed around and told what's good and what ain't. I'll see. Uh, first, how much do you know about azalea plants? Well, to tell you the truth, I... Oh, heck, there ain't nothing Uncle Jed don't know about growing things. Anyway. <laughs> they used to say, if it grows, he knows. Well, they did. How charming. <laughs> now, here's my home address. Lawns need mowing, the hedges trimming, the borders are overgrown. The place is a mess, and I want it cleaned up. But, uh, and when you're through at my place, go next door and see to my neighbor ladies' azaleas. Mr. Allen Allen, uh, we don't want to appear lazy or nothing, but uh, you mean we got to do all this before we can even look at your paintings? Certainly. Well, couldn't we just kind of jog through quick like? Now, see here, boy. And you too, Uncle Judd, was it? I want this work taken care of without delay. When you're finished, we'll see about a tour of my gallery. But, uh, Do you have any complaints about the money you're getting? Our money? No, except there's too much of it. It's fine. <laughs> Very well, then. Ta-ta. What's ta-ta mean? Probably got a stuttering problem. Don't say nothing. <laughs> tools for artists. Why don't you have Paul make you one when he gets back? That looks a mess. What did you say? Well, I, I, I said, I'm looking for Beth. Uh, it's pretty near monkey feeding time. Oh, well, I'll come to the kitchen with you. something other than a butcher knife. It ain't no good for artistic carving. What you gonna use? I think I'll make better time with a potato peeler. <laughs> hey! <laughs> you hairy little tree toad, I'll pluck you bald all over. <laughs> Look, she ruined it. She spoiled my masterpiece. <laughs> Why did she do it? Why? Well, Granny, I reckon Bessie don't know much about art, but she knows what she likes. There goes my chance to be world famous. There's only one of those in any artist. Sorry, Homer. At least Miss Drysdale still got a chance of winning. It's a pretty fair likeness of some blue bananas. Bananas? That don't look no more like bananas than that statue of hers does a man. Is that what that junk heap's supposed to be? Well, she just might as well cover it up and forget it. Ellie, you said cover it up. <laughs> Ellie, you and me is gonna fix Miss Drysdale's statue. Fix it? Well, I bet you Miss Drysdale won't even let us near it. I bet you Paul won't like the idea neither. I bet you you're wrong, cause nobody's gonna know that we is doing it. Come on. <laughs> Too bad Mr. Allen Allen's yard wasn't marked off better. Yeah. If that ball hadn't hit me on the head at the ninth hole, I'd still be mowing that golf course next door. Well, twixt that and the two yards we cleaned up, I believe we've earned our favor from you, Mr. Allen Allen. Oh, Mr. Clampett, there's been a terrible mistake. The employment agency called. I checked and phoned my house, but you'd already gone. Oh, it's awful. A man like you, a man with all your money mowing my lawn. Don't worry, I think we've done a pretty good job. Oh, it's not that. 
What can I do for you? Oh, my gallery's at your disposal. Well, we's looking for a real good painting to buy. The best one you got. Oh, well, I have just the thing. One of our most celebrated artists, Juan Hypo. <laughs> called Blue Bananas. Blue bananas ain't blue. Pitiful. Looks like something a monkey would paint. Price it only uh, 500, uh, 1,000, uh, $1,500. Well, uh, we were looking more for uh, painting of something real, you know, people, maybe a horse. Ah, you mean a painting of Van Gogh, Toulouse, the Trek, Cezanne, Modigliani. That's an awful long name for a horse. <laughs> You know, I think I have just the thing for two gentlemen of high sophistication, obvious refinement, and artistic savoir-faire. Yeah, but what about us? Oh, I meant you. I have something in the back room I've been saving for, for a special customer. A genuine Rembrandt. Hey, Uncle Jed, I heard of Rembrandt. He's that guy that made the movie about. The little bitty French fella. <laughs> Any painter that's good enough to get a movie made about him ought to be good enough for us. Go tell him we'll take it. <laughs> well, I want to thank you again, Mr. Allen Allen. Oh, it's one Allen. Oh, excuse me, Mr. One Allen. Well, uh, bye. It's been a pleasure doing business with you. Oh, the pleasure's been all mine, believe me. Ta-ta. <laughs> Too bad, it's just that one word gives him stuttering trouble. Ta, son. <laughs> well, let's go. That is, as long as you're sure we got us a genuine Rembrandt. Uh, don't worry, Uncle Jet. As you get better educated, you just know these things. Besides, it's signed right down at the bottom, big as life, Sam Rembrandt. <laughs> yes, Mrs. Drysdale, as chief judge, I can say your Karl Botch sculpture will probably win the award. It's not often you see a botch like mine. <laughs> you're so right. I'm a great admirer of Karl's. He's so modest about his work. Says he owes everything to a painter he knew as a boy. A chap named Homer Gribble. <laughs> well, I'm quite busy, and I know you want to get started with your judging. Yes, and we're so fortunate to have Mr. Curtis for the contest. He's so astute and discerning, so clear-sighted. <laughs> 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 Mr. Clavin, oh, what a surprise. Ooh. Ooh. What's you? What is it? Howdy, Mr. Drydale. We know how strong you feel about that contest, so we went to the best art store in Beverly Hills and got you a genuine Rembrandt. Really? Oh, how wonderful. I'm so thrilled I don't know what to do. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Why are you so happy? Are they moving? They're giving me a Rembrandt. <laughs> a Rembrandt? His, his paintings cost a fortune. He, he's the Dutchman that cut his ear off. You oafish money lender. That was Toulouse Lautrec. <laughs> Mr. Clampett, could you bring the painting over to the house and place it near my sculpture? Good. I'm going to unveil them in about an hour, and I want you as my guests. Oh, no, not at my place. Can't you just look over the hedge? <laughs> Fine. Ta-ta. I wish I knew what that ta word was. Miss Drysdale has trouble saying it, too. <laughs> Shall I take the painting over? Yeah, and leave it someplace near her statue. I'll see can I find Granny and Ellie. Where them corn shocks was moving. Heck, everybody knows it. Ain't got no corn shocks in Beverly Hills. Especially moving ones. I must be seeing things. Ow! Oh! Excuse me, mister. For a minute there, I thought you was a corn shock. Uncle Jed? Hey, Uncle Jed! <gasps> Looky there. Nice little cupids with wings on them. And that's all they got on. I bet they found it in the attic to give to Miss Drysdale. We ain't giving nobody nothing that looks like that. I gotta get to my paint. Homer, I'm sorry to bother you, but I need your help again. Before we unveil my Carl Bosch and my Rembrandt, which I haven't even seen myself yet, may I say how delighted I am to have as our art critic 
Mr. Harold Curtis. Thank you, kind lady. <laughs> Time for the unveiling. At least they got a chance of winning now. Yeah, where do you see the painting we got him? I did. Shame on both of them. Huh? What are you talking about? Nothing. Just keep your eye on the statue. I already seen it. That's what you think. <laughs> and now, Judge Curtis, if you will unveil my masterpieces. <laughs> you do that statue? Oh, it's just mud, Paul. It'll wash off after she wins. Well, I admit it's an improvement, but you should... Oh, look, Miss Drysdale won. He's given her the prize. Mrs. Drysdale, you trailblazer of the arts, I hereby present you with the Culture Committee Award. Uh, oh, you're not serious. For these? Oh, no, no, for that. The abstract. <laughs> It's magnificent. And it's easy to see who Bessie belongs to. You have a very lovely daughter. <laughs> How about that? Beat out by a monkey. Thanks for nothing, Homer. <laughs> It's time to say goodbye to Jed and all his kin. They would like to thank you folks for kindly dropping in. You're all invited back next week to this locality to have a heaping helping of their hospitality. Hillbilly, that is. Set a spell. Take your shoes off. Y'all come back now. Here. Viacom. The